I Testify is about testifying of what Jesus Christ has done and can do in each of our lives. Through testimony of people just like you and through study of his word, our prayer is to encourage each follower of Christ to be a light in this world. So let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. Hello everyone and thank you for joining us again on I Testify. Today we are interviewing my friend, uh, Jaciel Javier, who is an ICU nurse who works at Redlands Community Hospital. Um, so Jaciel, I know that you have um, an extensive background uh, with in the Christian community. Um, you told me a lot about how your family uh, was raised Christian. Can you tell me a little bit how your life was when you grew up? Yeah, sure. Um, I grew up in the Philippines, so um, grew up in a Christian background, kind of Pentecostal side. And um, it was strange and a little, I would say a little confusing, like the religious aspect of it anyway. Um, uh, so we were, my, my mom went to seminars and she was telling me about what she learned. And it was about like hellfire and um, how <laughs> we all need to get our act together <laughs> to, uh, so we don't burn in hell forever and ever. <laughs> wow. So it was, uh, it was, I was, I think I was seven, seven, eight. I was pretty young. So like the imagery that she painted was pretty grotesque in a way that I was afraid <laughs> of this God. <laughs> and um, I felt like I needed to get my act together and I went to a Christian school and of course my teacher was like, well, liars go to hell, so if you lie, you know where you're gonna go. And I was like, oh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> um, so I just have this um, paradoxical picture of God who, who is supposedly love and yet there's this God who torments people forever. I just can't harmonize the two together. And so I was left with confusion and scared and not knowing who, which one's which and you know how to harmonize the two ideas that I was being told. Um, so later on, I was able to, um, I found this verse in First John, uh, five verse, I guess we could start in 17. And he's, it says, Here, herein is our love made perfect, that we may be boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so we are in this world. There's no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment, and fear is not made in perfect love. Um, we love him because he first loved us. Hmm. And so it was when I found that, I was like, wow, and now it makes sense. Because after everything I learned about God and the different principles, little pictures of him emerges and made me see him clearly and know that he is just, he is mercy, and he is, he is love, as he said he is. Hmm. You said you found that in First John 4 or 5? Five. It's four. On four. Sorry. No, it's four. I just wanted to make sure I was in the right place. Okay. Yeah, so what you kind of realized was that if you had this fear aspect of God, then that wasn't God at all because God is love and there's no fear yeah. in love. So you, you just realized that it didn't make sense, but you didn't know what the answer was. Yes, and so I was just left with confusion. Um, and going to school and I was being told, oh, if you do this, then you're gonna go to hell. And pretty much like trying to work my out of that. So I need to make sure I follow and make sure I don't sin. And it's pretty much trying to work to a salvation which I can never attain. Um, so I was pretty much like trapped and not knowing, but I did know good aspects of God. I just didn't know how to, I guess, mend the two together. Mm -hmm. um, I like this word. Um, in verse 17 um, that you just read, Jasiel, we have boldness, boldness or confidence mm -hmm. in the day of judgment. 
And I like that the verse also tells us why we can have this boldness, which is that we follow in his footsteps. But you have to know who he is, like you said, because of that. Um, and if you didn't know who he was, then you couldn't have a confidence in him or in, in your salvation also. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a very telling verse. Thanks. So how did God lead you to know who he is? And um, I suppose, I guess it started uh, during my nursing application. So originally I wanted to apply to UCLA and for some reason their deadline closed a day early than what it was posted. Mm -hmm. So I, <laughs> I missed it. And I remember praying, um, I have two things that I prayed and one of them is um, pretty much, I want a day where set aside for me to be able to worship. Because in me knowing going to college, there's many temptations and, you know, there's the party aspect and then there's trying to figure out yourself aspect and just many different avenues in which I don't really want to fall in. And the second thing was, I want to know God more, not fall away from Him. And so everyone's like, well, you're pretty much vegetarian and you want to go to mission. And why don't you just go to Loma Linda? They, I was like, where's Loma Linda? I never heard of Loma Linda. And so they're like, yeah, Loma Linda, you know, it's just an hour away. I was like, man, an hour away. That's not far enough. It's not far enough. <laughs> like, it's not far enough. <laughs> and so um, I was like, okay, I guess I, well, I'll consider it. And there was a college fair, and uh, there was a college fair, and Loma Linda was there. And for some reason, my prerequisite all fit. Mm. And I'm like, that's kind of weird, because normally each nursing um, program has their own prerequisite, and at least there may be like two or three um, that you need to take in order to get in. For some reason, mine just fit perfectly as if I'm applying to that school. And so, I, <laughs> I think this is the only school I applied, and I think I, w I was in the waiting list. And I didn't really know if I'm gonna be in the program, and I was in Canada, until like my mom told me about it. And so, it's like, oh yeah, you got accepted. I'm like, oh great, I have a week <laughs> to get everything ready. <laughs> Came here and- Luckily, you were only an hour away though. So. <laughs> right, <laughs> luckily I'm only an hour away. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just hop on a plane and <laughs> you know, do what I need to do. Um, so I came to Loma Linda and I start to drift away. Um, I, I guess my faith, I'm not, I don't know I'm here. I don't know why I want to become a nurse anymore. Um, it's just, um, I was trying to figure out why God sent me here. And it seems like nothing was, you know, nothing that I did in school was going well. And I, th I actually thought I was gonna play one of my classes I was like, God, if you want me to stay here, I need a certain grade. And sure enough, finals day came and wow, I got that exact same grade for me to actually go forward. And it wasn't until then that I met um, my friend Erin here, who we were supposed to study and she works late because she, she works at Starbucks around that time. And um, she came into my little house, <laughs> dropped on the floor and started doing push-ups. And I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> it's almost... I was, uh, <laughs> I was trying to stay awake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I was like, wow, it's, it's like it's almost midnight and we're supposed to study, uh, but she broke the ice and we became friends ever since. Um, now, Erin goes to this like uh, meetings, like the restoration and things like that. And we talked about religion a little bit. Um, and so I went to restoration and what year was this? Um, what year was it? Was it 2016? No. 2014, I think. 14, yeah. Daniel Conda. <clears throat> Restoration mm. is a series, for our viewers, a series of evangelistic meetings. Meetings, yes. Here in Loma Linda. Actually, it's for the students on campus. Yes, right? yes. Yeah. So everyone's like, yeah, they have free lunch, and they talk about relationship, and they talk, you know, talk about like, you know, the Bible. And so she was really excited about this, and I came, and I have a com different experience, but I didn't shun it like completely. So she didn't invite me to a Bible study um, that was led by one of our classmates, Priscilla. And so when I went, 
um, I was expecting a pastor because from the background that I came, you know, came from, it seems like they, they, they're the only one who needs to, who could study the Bible and have authority. Um, and so me trying, be, being all confused and not knowing my Bible and not knowing what, you know, what it says, and even they don't know what it's saying um, because of the varying opinions that they give me. I'm like, wow, I have no chance <laughs> to understand this thing. <laughs> so, um, lo and behold, my friend Priscilla was there and gave us a Bible study. Um, and she simply asked, the, you know, we have a topic. And I believe the first one was the great controversy. She simply opened it, you know, read it, made me think for myself, and let the Holy Spirit work. And so week by week, I actually rearranged my whole weekly schedule so I could go to that Bible study. Mm. Because to me, it, it made sense, and it's what the Word said. Mm. And I was like, wow, there's this lay, lay person who have, mm. you know, knowledge about what the Bible say and was willing to give it to someone else to share. And that gave me confidence, that gave me peace and assurance that this thing could actually be understood. Um, but not, but also week by week, there's pictures of God that I didn't know about that emerged. And I slowly fell in love with this God. And at, as it says in John 12. John 12, yes. John 12, 32. Mm. It says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men onto me. Mm. Um, and so now, um, after learning about the truths and about him, you know, I wasn't being forced to obey, but I was simply obeying because of who he is. Mm. Um, and so now it's not like I'm working for my salvation. It's now I'm, wor I'm obeying because I am saved. Mm -hmm. um, and so just slowly, like week by week, um, like the state of the dead <laughs> was a big one. The Sabbath, that when, when I learned about the Sabbath, it was loud and clear. God was like, this is why you're here. Because that's one of my prayers. I never heard of the Sabbath. Like, I want a set time for worship. Mm -hmm. I never heard of the Sabbath. And I was like, wow, that makes sense. Um, and then the issue of hellfire. So when I learned the truth about that, I decided to get baptized. It was, it was that truth that about hellfire, how God is just and merciful and is not there to torment uh, people for eternity just because but at the end of it really if you look at the hellfire it's he's the one who's being I guess grievous throughout eternity and carrying that out for you know for us um, so from then on um, I learned about you know, how God's, um, how it says in Romans 8, uh, 5, is it 5? Five? 5, 8, sorry. Romans 5, 8, it says, but God commanded his love towards us that in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Um, and so when I was a kid, I thought I needed, you know, I need to work for something. But no, it didn't say that. The Bible didn't say that. It says, that even though I was sinning, even though I was confused, God still loved me. And I just, it, I didn't know he, he, who he was until it was being revealed to me. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I found out about that truth, I mean, I, I couldn't just keep quiet because my sister and I are very close. And if we like food or any places that we like, we tend to share it. Um, but this time it was it was the Bible. It was the gospel. So I just you know simply start sharing it and sharing it to the point that um, 
they too start to see the God who I knew now and love and decided to get baptized. How um, many sisters do you have? I have three. Mm. Three. Are, are you the oldest? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they also started coming to church with you before they got baptized. So yeah. that you started talking with them. It kind of opened up a discussion. Then you invited them to start coming to church. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and then they were hearing that along with your studies. Yes. And how long did it take from the time that they started being interested to getting baptized themselves? I think it might be like a year. A year, a year mm -hmm. or a year and a half around that time. I, I actually didn't know they wanted to get baptized until she, one of my sisters told one of my friend um, <laughs> because I didn't want to push it. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, you know, God worked in me in a way that he didn't push baptism or shove that on my throat. I want them to have that same experience in which they themselves says, yes, I like that God and I'm willing to, you know, give my life mm -hmm. um, and get baptized. So after yeah. your siblings, then, <laughs> then what happened? I mean, it, does it end there? Well, after that, you know, I'm kind of, um, I learned about the health message. I mean, I was already kind of vegetarian, um, but I didn't know about, you know, the different um, benefits of it. And so I started to share it. And, um, and now, like, you know, my family are eating more vegetables. And, um, and then so they too are starting, you know, to share it through their friends and things like that. And now they're, you know, they're vegan and, and whatnot. And they just, you know, it just became a, and sharing it to my grandparents and, my, now my sister, t sometimes they would actually pray with them before they didn't. And so it was just like a, kind of like a nice, um, that God does bring family together and um, bring them all closer, not just for because, but mm -hmm. because, you know, he did invented family mm -hmm. and marriage. And um, for some reason, it was actually this that made me closer to my sister. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I grew up um, not really separately <laughs> with them. Like, they're kind of like my neighbors, so I didn't really get to know them very well <laughs> until like later on. Um, um, so this, uh, the Bible allowed me to be more vulnerable and allowed to share some of my experience, um, but also brought us closer together. Mm. Yeah. You know, one, I love that story, how your family was able to see Christ in your life. I kind of tie it in again with John chapter 12, verse 32, where it says, and I, and, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. But in your story and in everyone else's story, while Christ is arising in your life, mm -hmm. people are being drawn to him through your life. Mm -hmm. So it's not just you being drawn to Christ, but everyone else is being drawn to Christ through your story. Mm -hmm. And I think that's encouraging for, for all of us. You know, that um, as we're becoming more and more acquainted with the love of Christ through the Bible, that we're not only being pulled to Christ, but we can also pull our family and friends to Him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's always nice to know that we can also end up loving our sisters more, <laughs> <laughs> even though before they were neighbors. <laughs> now they're more like sisters, so very nice. Yeah, thanks mm -hmm. for bringing that up. And I also liked in your story how you brought up that your prayers that you had you had specific things that you were mm -hmm. wanting, but even that didn't come from you. Who wants, who in their mind says, I want to have a day to spend with you? And so it was like God was prompting you from the beginning to ask him something, and then he answered it. He had set it up for you. He already knew how to help you and lead you. And that's just amazing to me because, you know, so many times we think, you know, we, we need to do something, we need to try, but God's like, he is the author and the finisher of our faith. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's very evident in your, your um, testimony, I like that. Yeah, that kind of reminds me of, because um, my mom, my mom always was like, you know, you just, um, I'm not sure where in the Bible she quotes it. I think it might be in Isaiah, but um, it goes along the way of, um, my hand is never too short to reach anyone. Mm -hmm. And I remember during um, the time where, you know, I was in school and started to kind of fall away, um, that I felt like, oh, maybe there's no hope for me um, at all. Um, and then I remember my mom just keeps saying that over and over again to the point that maybe there is, you know, a chance for, for that. 
um, and, you know, hold and behold, you know, God ended up leading me to here mm -hmm. um, um, and to get to know him more fully. Mm. It's, uh, it's Isaiah 59.1. 59. <clears throat> I'll, I'll read it because it is, I love this verse as well. It says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. Mm. And yeah, I think that's super powerful having to do with your life um, in that, like Aaron said, you were, you were praying these specific things or you were, you were just wanting, mm -hmm. you were desiring mm -hmm. these specific things and he heard them. In fact, he heard them way before you probably even knew you, you desired them. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Because he had true. a plan already in place. Yeah. So, so knowing of Christ in a more clear way now, looking back, um, were there certain points in your walk with Christ that you, you can now say, I was actually hungering for Christ, hungering mm -hmm. for righteousness, when at that time you really didn't know what you were doing? Like now looking back, can you say, yeah, at this point, when I was asking my mom this question or I was at church, I really was hungering, but at the time I didn't know that. Can you kind of bring um points? I would say so. Mm -hmm. um, I remember we went to a couple different churches, mm -hmm. um, but I wasn't satisfied with the, you know, the opinions that they were giving me. Mm -hmm. um, so I was just kind of looking and looking still. And I think God was merciful enough to pull me out of that and brought mm -hmm. me, me here. Mm -hmm. um, because if I have it my way, <laughs> I probably wouldn't have gone to Loma Linda at all or not. It wasn't, I never actually heard of Loma Linda. And funny enough, actually now um, that they know I'm, you know, Adventist, they're like, oh yeah, you know, your aunt used to be, you know, Adventist no and way. things like that. And I was like, oh yeah, she's been looking for this book for quite some time. And so I brought her actually a book. I didn't know if that was the book that she was looking for. Um, but she was just sharing to me her experience way back in the Philippines. And she's like, yeah, it's a purple book or something like that. So I went and got him visit her. I gave her the Desire of Ages. And she was reading to her. She's like, you know, this is the book that I've been looking for. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, now you have it. <laughs> now you have it. Um, but yeah, there's different, um, I would say so. And I think the change wasn't um, hard. I didn't think it was it was hard. Um, I felt like I was just drawn and I knew that was the truth and, you know, the logical thing to do is just do it. <laughs> mm. And it just kind of became a nat natural to kind of go that route. Um, mm -hmm. Whether it's like, you know, health, exercise, you know, keeping the Sabbath. And actually there's a funny story about um, that because I made a deal with God and I was like, I'm not going to study. Okay, I'm going to study the Bible, and um, I need help on my test. <laughs> <laughs> and that was like the highest grade I've gotten, and um, I believe it was critical care. That was the highest grade I got in, wow. in that class mm -hmm. when I kept it. And then from then on, I, um, I just kept it, and I found joy in, you know, just, wow, there is a day where I could just go and study the Bible. Mm -hmm. yeah. Aaron, will you share? I'm interested to know. Um, this experience that you had with Jaciel and just witnessing to her. I mean, was it intentional on your part to witness um, to her? Actually, when you say that, it's funny because I was going to make a comment about how, what I saw in her life. Um, it's found in Proverbs 16, 9. 16, 9? Yeah, Proverbs 16, 9. And here it says, a man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Um, and the reason why I was going to bring it up is because I've, I've now witnessed her. There's so many stories that she has that um, she hasn't even mentioned where she's witnessing to coworkers that she has. She's witnessing to people that she just randomly meets at the, <laughs> the rock climbing gym, you know. Um, <laughs> and very much like... I was in the same position. There was another friend of mine that I was witnessing to at the time as well, and I didn't know what I was doing. I had no clue. I didn't. I wasn't intentional, you know. Looking back, and even while I was in the moment, I I felt like 
I was unqualified. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know the Bible well. You know, I didn't want to mess it up. And that was a prayer of mine. But what I find that's interesting is if you're willing, God will lead you. And while you may have um, an idea of what, what you might want it to look like, or maybe you don't have an idea of what you want it to look like, it's just you're floundering the entire way, he will direct your steps. And if you're willing and, and if you have made yourself, um, if you humble yourself before him, he will show you the path that you need to be on. So in that sense, I did not have a particular plan and it's kind of amazing that this happened. And, mm -hmm. But um, I definitely think I see that in her life as well. She's, she's willing, she's able, mm -hmm. and she's sharing it. It's way beyond, I couldn't reach any of the people she did. It was right. for her, so, mm. yeah. And it was through just your friendship yeah. first? Yeah, I, you, never, you never know, because actually when we met, I don't know if you remember when we met, we met at, I think it was, it was like a luau, I think it was. Oh yeah, I remember that night. It was after oh. our first um, test for nursing school, yeah. it was fundamentals. Mm -hmm. And I remember that night very specifically because I failed that test. Yeah. <laughs> I was so distraught. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember the following day, our teacher was like, you should consider um, changing your career. And wow. I was like, wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we had a teacher yeah. who did that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, yeah, I, I, I didn't think much of it, you know. She was just someone else um, who was there. And I guess four. now, you know, God and the gospel just became another extension of our friendship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So. It's just part of your life, Erin. I, I remember when you, you know, because you told, you told me this before, and it was just you were so excited that Anil Kanda was coming for restoration <laughs> that you could not contain yourself. <laughs> it's just another part of who you, who you were. Yeah. The gospel is not just a section of our lives. It is our life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Amen. it's a trap to fall into. I think sometimes that, you know, everything we present has to be well thought out. We have to have mm -hmm. logical reasons for what we're doing. We have to explain every single point. Most of the time, people are not looking for that. They're mm -hmm. not looking for you to be logical and explain every single point and have a good reason for everything. They want to know that you care, mm -hmm. that you are their friend. And I think that's why it works so well with her witnessing your family. She actually cares for them. She loves them. Um, the people that she comes into contact with, they see God working in her life. It's more than just words on a page. And mm -hmm. so I think that um, while that has its place, I can see how love has worked through her. God's love mm -hmm. has worked through you. So. Thank you, Jasiel, for coming to share your powerful testimony. And it is true that the, the word of God has its powerful place because once you realize um, once they realize that you care and you believe in this word, it's powerful, it's living. Mm -hmm. So we thank you viewers also for joining us and uh, we want to encourage you and pray that you let your light so shine before men that you glorify your Father in heaven. Thanks for watching. <laughs>